Lakshmi Mahasaraswati Swaha Namaste. So uh, this Siddha Lakshmi Stotra is a very powerful uh, and complete mantra that makes it a maha mantra. It can bestow or award anything. So the section that comes next is called Vini Yogaha. Vini Yoga means setting the intention or describing the whole environment of the stotram. Yeah, you can look all these things up, by the way, in the PDF, which contains the complete text of the stotram, as well as explanations of the different sections. Look in the video description for the link. You can download it and read it along with me. So the Vini Yoga, I won't go through the Sanskrit, but the meaning is, this hymn is to invoke Sri Siddha Lakshmi Devi and perform her mantra japa to obtain her complete grace in all respects, and especially for removal of all obstacles afflicting our material and spiritual pursuits. The sage, Rishi, is Hiranyagarbha. He's also the author of the work. The meter, Chandra for the mantra is Anushtup. Anushtup is a very uh, common, very popular meter. It's used in the majority of Bhagavad Gita, for example. So it's easy to chant and uh, it lends itself to musical treatments, which is very nice. The seed or bija mantra is Shring. The power or Shakti of the mantra is Hring. The key, Kilakang, to unlock the mantra is Kling. All these will be explained later on. May the Divine Mother, Sri Siddha Lakshmi, who represents the combined power of Sri Mahakali, Mahalakshmi, and Mahasaraswati Devis, remove all types of misery, sorrow, poverty, debts, and health issues affecting us, and bestow immense wealth, both spiritual and material, upon us, as well as fulfillment of all cherished desires, hopes, and wishes. Not bad, eh? <laughs> well, I can tell you from my experience, <laughs> after doing this jagna yesterday, uh, it's very hard to describe the result. But it's like we all need mother energy. We all need to feel that we're safe, cared for, and beloved. And that somebody is looking after our interests. Not just anybody, <laughs> but someone who can really do something about it. And, of course, the goddess is the one. She's the great mother. She's the mother of the whole universe. So this prayer, which approaches her in her most powerful form, just, it gives so much benefit. I can't even describe it. You should try it yourself. That's really the answer. You have the video of the jagna. So you have an example of how to chant the mantras. And you also have the PDF with the texts and the meaning. So really, you have everything. Actually, you have more than I have because you have the video. I had to put together all the pieces <laughs> and make it into a jagna. You don't have to do a fire ceremony. You can just light some incense, offer a lamp, you know, or even a candle and chant the prayer. That's the important thing. And it should be chanted with love, with bhakti. So often I go to a temple or to a ceremony and I hear these guys chanting, like it's a business, you know? They're just trying to get through it as quickly as possible. And there's no expression at all. If anything, their expression is that they're annoyed. <laughs> 
<laughs> I got to go through all these prayers. Oh, not again. It doesn't sound like there's love in it. And when you approach God, I mean, and especially the goddess form of the divine, you should do with love. You know, <laughs> you may agree or you may not agree, but Osho said something very interesting about women. He said, a woman is not to analyze, not to figure out, not to try to predict or control. A woman is to be loved. And this is <laughs> so true, triply true <laughs> of the goddess, because here she is in her three most powerful forms, all in one. So like this is the main chance, you know, <laughs> if you have any prayers, any wishes, any desires. Or if you just want to worship, you just want to give her your love. I mean, really, that's the best reason for chanting this prayer. And you will find that she reciprocates from within. Amazingly. I mean, you know, uh, I mentioned that the, uh, the way the altar was set up, and I'll try to put up a picture here. I put first a yantra, a Mahalakshmi yantra. And then I put some bricks over that. And then the fire altar goes on top of that. The bricks are to protect the uh, yantra from the heat. Then, of course, decorating with flowers and so many things. And offering into the fire a mixture of 108 sacred Ayurvedic herbs. These herbs are hand-picked, hand-selected. They come in a, like an assortment, a big bag full of different packets of little herbs. And I had so much fun opening the little packets and taking out, you know, about half of each and mixing them all together into a, a mixture that I could throw on the fire. Because each one has its own form, different seeds, leaves, sticks, what looked like peels of fruit and so many things, all dried, of course, and different nice aromas. I mean, when I was doing this work, the room smelled like the forest. You know, when you go in the forest, especially just after a rain, and the, the smell is just indescribable. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I am the original fragrance of the earth. So this is this fragrance has now been turned into nanoparticles <laughs> of ghee <laughs> and coated the entire inside of my house. The whole house smells like, <laughs> smells wonderful. So today was a kind of cloudy, windy, blustery, rainy day, you know, middle of winter. So I just spent most of the day in bed cuddling with lion. See, there he is. <laughs> and it was beautiful. It was beautiful because I felt that my desires had all been satisfied. I mean, not that they were satisfied physically, but on another level, somehow or other, mentally or emotionally. I mean, it's very powerful. If you haven't done it already, go back and watch the ceremony video. It's on the same playlist. And I mean, really, it's an amazing experience. So what comes next? There are three nyasas. Nya, not the space agency. <laughs> Nyasa in Sanskrit means to place. And so what we're doing is we're placing different energies in different parts of the body. So I'm not going to go through them in detail. They're in the PDF file. You can download it. It's in the video description. Uh, there's a link to Mediafire. Yeah, you have to get the Mediafire account or something to download it. But hey, it's better than it's better than uh, Dropbox. They're not so nosy. Uh, they don't like look up all the files on your computer. So anyway, the Rishadi Nyasa is first, and that's mainly to the author, Hiranyagarbha, or Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma is the architect of the universe. He's the creator God. 
And he's also the husband of Saraswati, the goddess of learning and music. So this nyasa is uh, to invoke his energy, his presence, and to put it in various places in the body. And the next one is the karanyasa. The, uh, the work is done with the hands and the fingers are full of all kinds of energy and desires. So the idea of karanyasa is to purify them, to purify the hands that will be used to make the sacrifice. And then finally, there's the Hridayi Sadanganyasa, putting the goddess in the heart. Okay. This really got to me when I was doing the ceremony, that the goddess, well, she's already in the heart. She's the life force, prana. Okay, But more than that, when a devotee approaches her, she is love. And she, of course, being the mother of all, is also the lover and beloved of all. Doesn't it make sense? So these thoughts, if nothing else, purify and enliven our hearts. And they uh, take us beyond the ordinary mundane conception of life as being about getting what you want and all wealth and power and all that nonsense. You can't take any of that with you. But any advancement that you make in bhakti or in spiritual life, you can take with you. <laughs> and you get it back in the next life if you don't attain moksha in this life. Whatever spiritual knowledge you have earned in this life comes to you automatically in the next. So the next section is called the Atta Dhyana. Atta means now. Dhyanam is the meditation. So what is the meditation of this mantra? We meditate upon the youthful and vivacious Divine Mother Sri Siddha Lakshmi Devi, who has four faces representing the first four Matrika Devis, Brahmi, Maheshwari, Kaumari, and Vaishnavi. These are the Devis who are the uh, spouses of the three major demigods and the offspring of Shiva and Kali who is called Bala. Huh? And uh, there's a wonderful mantra for worshiping her which I can't tell you because it's secret. <laughs> anyway, so the four Matrika Devis and six arms. She has three eyes indicating the activation of the third eye Agnya Chakra, and she also holds a sword for slashing the ego and a trident representing all the triads. She also holds a lotus indicating expansion of consciousness, a chakra, discus, indicating the activation of all the body chakras, and a mace to pound all karmas. <laughs> oh, one thing about the nyasas. At the end of the, um, I think it is, yeah, at the end of the Hridayi Sadanga Nyasa, we open up the left hand and take these two fingers and pound it. Huh? And we say, Om Ashtraya Pa. And that means this is a weapon. This mantra is a weapon. It's a subtle weapon against all the subtle diseases of ego, pride, false identification with the body and material possessions and so on. So, you know, the goddess has no ego. She is a pure servant. So when she sees ego in us, she's like, oh man, <laughs> you got to quit that nonsense. Because it is actually the source of our suffering. And she doesn't like to see her children suffer. So she always arranges nice things, huh? doesn't she? To, <laughs> to discourage the ego. And of course, the biggest one is that our attachments and our desires never turn out the way we want. 
So it's better to give them up. And especially this idea of being an individual person. You know, uh, really, it's, well, that's an advanced idea. Well, we'll get into that later. Right now we're on the platform of karma yoga, doing your duty. And your duty is to worship God. And the form of God that you worship is up to you. So if you like, you can approach in the form of goddess, Siddha Lakshmi. So there, the rest of the dhyana goes like this. The Bija Mantra Aum, representing the Shabda Brahman, super consciousness manifested as sound, indicating auspiciousness, is a manifestation of the Divine Mother Lakshmi herself, who is the dynamic super consciousness. The Divine Mother Lakshmi is the very embodiment of the imperishable heart of Lord Vishnu, who is the static superconsciousness from whom she emerges. So whether you are a Vaishnava and you worship Vishnu and Lakshmi, or a Shaivite and you worship Shiva and Devi, the story is the same. The male form of the God represents the static superconsciousness, Brahman, the Supreme. And the Shakti represents the energetic superconsciousness, the dynamic superconsciousness that generates all forms and activities and time and space itself. So when she comes into existence, also the form of the male God comes into existence. Without her, Shiva or Vishnu is just emptiness, pure consciousness, nirvana, okay? Then finally, the Bija mantra, Hring, which is Mahamaya Bija, is the power of the cosmic illusion and represents all triads. It is the cause of creation, preservation, and destruction. The Divine Mother Lakshmi is the embodiment of the unfathomable bliss of Lord Vishnu. She alone, she alone can take us to him. So I'm going to uh, stop here. There's more. And in the next episode, we're going to talk more deeply and explain more thoroughly the meaning of these three uh, bija mantras. Aum, there's shring is in there someplace too. Hring and kling. Aum tatsat. Aum harihi aum.